for some of the newer generation. All they know about Nicolas Cage is he's a walking meme generator online. But those born in the 90s and earlier look at him much differently. He was a dramatic actor, a comedian, an action star, you name it, Cage could pull it off. And yes, he had his fair share of schlock as well. So what can be done with a man in his 50s who's already done it all? Well, you make a film about him. And that film is The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. Before I really dive in, I just want to point out this is my first video in the new home studio. It sounds echoey as all hell. I have strategically placed sound barriers. I have a, a mic that's very close to me. So hopefully what I'm hearing isn't the final product. And if it is, well, there's going to be some growing pains in the studio. We'll, we'll tweak. We'll tinker. Think about subscribing. I post tons of movie content. We're back, baby. We're doing it. And so is Nicolas Cage. Although he never left, and he will promptly tell you that along with his agent throughout the film. This is an interesting film because it's one that's definitely catered to a specific audience. Those that grew up with Nicolas Cage in his prime. I just don't see going into this blind not really knowing any of Nicolas Cage's works and thinking this was great, or even good. You'd be lost through a lot of the references, and believe me, there's a good amount. Unfortunately, the references amount to nothing more than, hey, remember this film? Or look, there's a giant statue of Nicolas Cage and the double guns. There isn't a lot of creativity going on. We don't see him run in slow motion with white doves flying behind him. None of the naked gun satirical stuff I was kind of hoping for where they would not only reference the movies, but also kind of parody them. The plot works to an extent. I think it takes itself far too serious. When the movie has a little bit more fun is when I'm really engaged. But I'll get to that in a second. Basically, it boils down to Nicolas Cage plays himself. He's in his 50s. He's struggling to find a new meaty project to attach himself to. Something that really wows people and showcases that he is an incredibly talented actor. There's entire sites, theories, an episode of Community dedicated to the fact that no one's really sure if Nicolas Cage can act or not. Because he'll put in one great performance over here, but in the next turn around and shit out like six really mediocre ones. Just straight to DVD stuff. The guy doesn't turn down a movie role. Anyway, the guy's at his lowest, can't get a job, quits acting altogether, and it's at that point when he gets an opportunity that he just can't pass up anymore due to debts that he owes and a daughter that's incredibly disappointed with him. Javi, a multi-millionaire, possibly billionaire, I'm not really sure, invites the guy over for a million dollars to just hang out at a birthday party. What could possibly go wrong? Everything! It turns out, Harvey's in with the cartel, and if Ozark showed me anything, they are not to be trifled with. Also, I just finished that season up. I'm very disappointed, but maybe we'll talk about that at another time. The majority of this movie's Nicolas Cage and Pedro Pascal bouncing lines, bouncing comedy off each other. Very good chemistry. Loved these two together. Pedro, man, he's such a great actor. I love everything he's been doing. And really, everything with the drug cartel, the FBI spy stuff, could have been thrown out and we just could have had this very simple buddy road trip type adventure film where Nicolas Cage is finding himself, you know, and he's helping Pedro see his film become a reality. I think that would have been a tighter movie altogether. It's not bad by any means. I was enjoying myself, but again, I grew up with Nicolas Cage movies. I'm definitely the demographic for this. I still think they could have pushed a little bit in one direction or another, gone all in with the over-the-top action comedy, or maybe just scaled back on some of the dramatic moments that were unnecessary. My favorite part by far is when the two guys are tripping balls and they're seeing stuff, they're running away from fictitious enemies, climbing over walls they don't need to climb. It's, it's a hilarious moment and definitely something I wanted more of. With a movie like this, where you're constantly referencing The Rock, Face Off, Con Air, and you have a little like, you know, the bunny in the box moment or him yelling the bees, why not go all in with that, you know? I was so hoping we get like a freaking John Travolta cameo, a little face off action or, or something, you know, just really go nuts. Production wise, I had no problem with it. It looks pretty. It's a nice location off in an island. Music was serviceable. Nothing really stood out. Although there's some really, really 
obnoxious product placement and I don't know if this was a tip of a hat to an older Nicolas Cage film that I don't remember but the brother is eating and this isn't even good product placement because I already forgot what it is tricks I think or, or Wheaties I'm not even sure but they do like this full dedicated moment where he pours the cereal, he's eating it, he's talking about how much he loves the product, and they even have this like perfectly framed shot of the box of cereal as the camera slowly zooms out. If it was an intentional Wayne's World type situation where they're like calling out how pathetic this product placement was, it fell flat for me, it didn't land. They didn't go in far enough, which again, is this whole movie in general. The last thing I'll point out is we have some cage on cage action. Good old fashioned cage fight in the mind. He sees a younger version of himself in his prime. It only happens a couple times and honestly, I found it pretty pointless. I think I said more than enough. Well, there you have it. The unbearable weight of massive talent. Not bad, not great, just, just fine. It got the job done. I was entertained. It's under two hours. If you're looking for something um, to just kind of get you by for an afternoon, this will do the trick. But I wouldn't rush out by any means, especially when Doctor Strange is right around the corner. I'm excited. Uh, that, that looks fun. If you saw this movie, I'm genuinely curious what you thought. Leave a comment below. Like the video if you had a good time. Please think about subscribing if you haven't. Like I said, we're, we're back. We're going to be posting videos constantly again. And hopefully, I'll see you around. Maybe think about joining me on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Uh, you can become a member for only a dollar a month. Show some support. Or become one right here on YouTube via that join button. You can also find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Adam Olinger, where I play a, you know, a myriad of games pretty mediocrely. Um, I'm currently into Fortnite because I'm basic. Last but not least, there's a plethora of other videos on this channel I encourage you to check out. There, there's one right there next to me, along with the, that subscribe icon thing. So, you know, there's, there's options, there's opportunities for you. 